So I wasn't shooting anybody. I was on the street corner selling drugs. The night before I got saved, I had a beer in one hand and a joint in the other. And I knew I was living in hell. I was in church, but not really in church. Like, man. I really need to get it together. I had no desire for God. I was you know, a precious heart putting on that, so. <laughs> I, I was not about me. I was very all of that. Put your faith in trust in Jesus. 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 My the mom most freely seeking. You have to seek with your whole heart. And change you and mold you if you just present yourself. Hello, welcome to my story again. We have another great one for you. Um, thank you for joining us. If you are new, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page and don't forget to click the notification bell so that you can get all the latest on what's happening on the Now Word page. I'm here with none other than Brother Tim. <laughs> how are you? Doing well. How about yourself? I am doing great. I'm excited Good. for Good. your story. Good. Thank you for doing this. Pleasure. And um, I think it's just great to um, for people to be able to hear. Um, people's stories. I think as the time has gone, people have um, just really enjoyed hearing that they're not alone right. in their journey. And so I think it's important. And so we'll jump in. You can tell us life before Christ. What is, <laughs> what's that like? <laughs> he laughs. So, so. <laughs> um, I actually grew up in church. Okay. So I would say, obviously, young age, seven, eight, nine, because actually my father's a pastor. So, uh, with that being said, um, prior to him becoming a pastor, my mother would always say, you know, we're going to church, we're going to church. Mm -hmm. Started off in Palestine Baptist Church, got baptized, all that stuff. You know, we'd go out to eat and do all the other good stuff, you know, that typically people would do, you know, after somebody gets baptized. Yeah. But, um, got a little older and then would go periodically so as I you know got in my teenage years it would probably be like every other weekend but then started to be a little bit more consistent but never really truly bought in never really connected if you will so it was kind of like okay we got this going on my friend goes to this church so I'm going to go over there or I would have friends you know come and come visit with me different things like that and then obviously as I got older went off to school so when I go off to school there was a huge, significant gap, and I think about this all the time. I can't believe it. So I would say, mm, realistically, maybe about five to seven years of just not just going to church consistently, although I had been going up. So went off to college, acting a fool, you know, <laughs> doing different stuff, but for whatever particular reason, Never really found a church home. I never really found anybody to go to church with. Never really was surrounded with people that provided a leadership to say, hey, you know what? Come over here. We need to do this, you know, just to make sure, you know, you're doing the right things. And so as a result, got further and further and further disconnected. Okay. And um, it wasn't until early 2000s that, you know, hanging out in clubs, you know, after playing sports and different things of that nature, hanging out and just just got tired of just hanging on the porcelain, <laughs> you know, would have, would, would have those moments where it'd be like, okay, you know, enough is enough. And so like, you know, we were talking about before about that defining moment. I probably think it was that, you know, like I said, early two thousands, it was enough to where it just hit me. I said, I'm just tired of feeling like this. Mm. And so do you, why do you think that you um, strayed further and further away? Um, from there, because your dad was a pastor, you yeah. were, but why do you think as you got older, you strayed further and further away instead um, of growing closer, straying? I still am mind boggled by that, even to this day. Like I said, I think about that from time to time, but like I said, it was never really anybody around that was going. So, you know, I know when I was younger, Mom, um, dad would be like, hey, you know, we're getting up, we're going to church. Mm. You know, we're going to get up, always give me a little dollar or two to put in church, thinking that, you know, I'm out. Yeah. It's like, you know, make sure you put that in church. So they were trying to teach the right principles, but at the same time, for whatever reason, I guess it was just more me just not being thorough and diligent enough to say, okay, I need to find this place. I need to find a church wherever I'm at. You know, I started out at Temple Junior College, probably should have found a place there to connect to, but for whatever reason didn't and it just got more and more consistent where I would just 
out of that loop, out of that connection. And so just, you know, friends were doing other crazy stuff, me following along doing it, or I was doing something silly and they're following me. And so it was like, okay. Um, so like I said, it got really out of hand and it wasn't until like the early 2000s that I said, okay, enough is enough. I'm stop. You know, so I would even go teaching and coaching. I would sit in my classroom and I remember just read the Bible because we would have times where nobody was in the classroom. So I would spend those times and I found myself feeling better during that time. Mm. So I said, okay, you know, I have to do more of this. Yeah. So as a result, um, started to come back home uh, periodically to uh, visit my mom or we would go or if I was here, you know, we would go to church and um, would be more consistent there. So I said, okay, I got to start doing this. But then, you know, that whole thing about joining church, but not really fully understand or fully accepting Christ. You're just like joining church because that was like the thing the Dukes, everybody used to say, okay, you know, you need to join church. You need to join church. Like, okay, mm-hmm. wasn't really that feeling. But then, you know, like I said, as a result, I started to grow more, you know, through readings and different things like that and just starting to just feel better. Staying away from certain people, staying away from certain things. I said, you know, this is obviously the track that I need to be on. You know, had some bad relationships that, you know, had I, hindsight really focused on what I should have been focused on. I would have been a lot better off, a lot further along. So needless to say, I uh, got to that point and I just said, you know, I'm giving my life to Christ. Wow. So what was one of the things you said where enough was enough, that uh, defining moment? What What was an example of something where you were like, I'm doing, this is it. Like, I'm tired of doing fill in the blank like i said holding on to the porcelain you know okay. i come you know from hanging out or whatever and head is throbbing and you know <laughs> had one too many and you know just doing too much and then of course you know like i said you know bad relationship here or there but even though you know hindsight looking back at it i just really wasn't myself who i am today just based on allowing either substances or environments control me you know, that was the thing that I really, you know, look back on now that I really know I was really out of source and out of connection just because, you know, when you're not connected into the spirit, you really kind of know when you have an wow. idea. And so I felt myself drifting. So I said, you know, this has got to stop. Right. And so um, you felt that defining moment. So what instantly changed? You said about 2000. Mm-hmm. You said this is it. So how old are you? Then what's your? I mean, you don't have to give me. You're by this time. Are you like an adult, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, okay. oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good adult, you're good. And so, um, what immediately changed once you said this is it? This is the day. What immediately changed for you? Environments you know? that, um, you know, like I said, I would stay away from, and you know, it's just obviously the spirit grabbing a hold of me, knowing now what I know. Stay away from that. Stay away from that. Don't answer that phone call. Don't do this. Don't go to this place. Uh, don't hang out with this person or don't go with these people or do what these people are doing, you know, because actually the crazy thing is, is growing up playing sports, went to school playing basketball. A lot of my friends who were playing basketball, we were doing some of that. And so it was like, okay, so we, after we go and go play after games or after pick up basketball or whatever the case may be, we're Mm -hmm. going over, you know, doing this type of stuff. So it's like, okay. We got to stop, fellas. You know, first of all, you know, we this, but, you know, <laughs> we got to slow down. So, I mean, it sounds like really just like the Holy Spirit, you really started having that conviction. Oh, yeah. Really, that um, kind of helps you to say, okay, those things that were cool or I guess you didn't really think about. Now you have that conviction. You have that, I feel bad. Um, I know these things are wrong. Like you said, Holy Spirit revealed to you. And so what? Um, <clears throat> what was the... Um, joy or what instantly um, is something that became the benefit, became a blessing to you because you decided uh, to follow Christ? It was probably the most hurtful moment in my life up to this point um, that I felt peace. And it was when my mother passed. Mm. She um, passed away in 2003. And I just remember, and I was bawling, crying or whatever, but at the same time, 
there was a sense of peace that was with me, that wow. was over me, that allowed me to continue on. Wow. Um, I mean, she was like my rock. I mean, like every sporting event I had, she was there. I mean, she she was, you know, really it. I mean, being a single mother at the time, you know, would do it for me and my brother. I mean, you know, she wouldn't miss anything. And so as a result, when that initially happened, I was really shell-shocked, but at the same time, in normal instances, if that happened to somebody that was connected as my mother and I were, you right. would think that they would just drift off. Mm. I never stopped, and I would always just kind of find myself thinking like, okay, what would she want me to do during right. this point in time? But obviously it was God saying, hey, you know, you need to keep going. This is what she would want, but at the same time, you can't sulk and whine or pout about what's going on now. So there was always a sense of peace. And I even still have good friends and family that even ask me to this day, how did you deal with that? And then of course, you know, now, uh, 2008, um, had my uh, youngest daughter who was born and dealing with cerebral palsy. And so just dealing with that on a daily basis, everybody's like, you know, you deal with that stress level or everything that's going on so differently, so calmly. And I'm like, it's not me. Right. Because there's moments and times, you know, you kind of get to that point where, you know, you want right. to snap or break just because life kicks in. You're looking around, seeing worldly type things or whatever. And so it's just like it can get tough. But it's nothing but God that kind of has his hand on me and saying, hey, I got you. Right. And I, I think that is so good because peace. We're, it's not the Bible doesn't say that we're not going to have once we follow Christ that we're not going to have trials and tribulations, but he does promise us peace and he does promise us joy. And that is the blessing and the benefit of accepting Christ and leaning in is the peace is and it becomes a great witness to people. Absolutely. It's an opportunity to share the gospel because they're like, man, how are you going through that? And you are surviving. You are moving you are still progressing and it's just a great way to give witness like Absolutely. oh well let me share with you, you Absolutely. Know, um why this is happening so what would you say is um any challenge or is that the challenge um besides the day-to-day -day, are there any other ca challenges you feel um day-to-day -day, you've been walking um since 2002 um but are there any challenges that you feel in this life, walking with Christ, um, is there any, you would say, in a day-to-day? -day? I would say there's always challenges in a sense, just because you have worldly things that are going on, whether it be things on television, environments going on. You know, you go to a sporting event, you might have those things that, you know, you were vulnerable to before, kind of surrounded by you. Um, dealing with kids and the educational system, sometimes yeah. they come to school. And they're talking about their various things that go on with them. And so I would just say just life in, in general tugs at you in multiple different directions. Mm -hmm. um, for me, it's like every morning I'm not the same if I don't get up and pray or wow. do some sort of devotion. Mm. because I feel that disconnect, much like what I was alluding to before, I started to really feel it when I wasn't. That's kind of how I am now. So if I don't make it to church for work or whatever else is going on that may draw me from there, I feel it like even like this morning I was up in class, um, you know, just thinking like that. I said, hey, you know, God help me, get me through this type. I mean, that's just kind of how I am right now. Uh, that's kind of where I am to where if I'm not connected, I know the difference. So if I don't do something, you know, mm -hmm. spiritually, mm -hmm. then I, I definitely know the difference. And do you feel like you grew into that? Like over time with your relationship with Christ, you grew into, I guess, having an understanding of starting your day off with, with uh, Christ. Absolutely. You know, being, I, you know, it's a credit to the people who we have and we're surrounded by here at Now Work. Um a number of different people who you talk to that have shared, you know, that this is kind of how they start their mornings off. I've shared scriptures with a number of different people. They share them back with me. I have some friends who I share it with and so on and so on. So refreshers like that um, help you kind of get through the day because, you know, as you know, life kicks in. And so what do you revert back to? You know, because mm -hmm. if you allow, you know, negative things to kind of get into your spirit, then that's kind of controlling your thought process versus you thinking, 
you know, Christ-like, how would I handle these type of situations? So that's why I always try to stay in a calm frame of mind and not let things, you know, get too out of control, you know, although they may be, but at the same time, you know, you sit back, you take a deep breath, say, what should we do, you know, in these instances mm -hmm. that, you know, Christ would like to see us do, you know, what can we learn from this? And as you go on, once you start regularly putting God first, opening up your word daily and stuff, it helps you to in those trying situations, you know, instead of that anger rising up, over time, you know, that will subside and you'll automatically think, OK, you know, you will automatically go to prayer or you will automatically go instead of just, you know. So, um, I, like you said, I think it's very important um, in your journey or in your walk, you know, to get to a point where um, you are taking in God, mm -hmm. or Jesus, you know, every day. Right. Um, to help you in your journey and make you. Um, more and more like him. Mm -hmm. That's how you get to know him. So the biggest, I guess you would say, um, besides the peace that he's given me, any any other, would you say, your biggest blessing since deciding to walk in this journey of life with Christ? Most rewarding, biggest blessing? I'd say for me it's an attitude change because uh, before, you know, I would have somewhat of a temper. I would flare up, especially, you know, and I don't want to say – being an athlete, you have to be like that. But mm -hmm. I mean, you know, being competitive, there's times when, you know, you your uh, intensity level is a little bit high. Well, that would sometimes be a response in normal conversation situation. It's like, you know, what are you talking about or whatever? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be like that. Um, so I would say, you know, mostly my attitude, how I handle certain things. Um, the other biggest joy, blessing is being able to share Christ with other people to talk about it because others have seen the change and they often now text me and say, Hey, what do you think about this? I notice, you know, you do this a lot and I'm very proud of you. You know, you're doing these type of things and so on and so on. So I've seen other people grow spiritually based on mm. things that God is doing for me, mm. which is, I would say probably the biggest joy. Awesome. And what would you say right now? We have people watching. What would you say to someone who maybe is on the fence, um, thinking about uh, walking, but not really all the way in, right? Someone, an early Tim, you know, <laughs> you, know, you know it, or maybe you've heard it, but you know, you're out there right now having a good time or oh, good time, air quotes. <laughs> what would you tell them right now? If they're on the fence, I'd say, you know, definitely submit your life to Christ. I mean, there's no hesitation that I would ever have. If I had to revert back to a time period earlier, there wouldn't be any reservations. So if you have that opportunity, do that. Connect with a church. Connect with brothers who are seeking Christ. Connect with people who have a... Uh, an understanding of Christ, how to seek uh, or how to guide people godly. That is probably the biggest thing is having mentors, having um, people around you to help you grow mm -hmm. because you can't do it by yourself. Amen. That's the other thing is that, you know, when you start talking about what has been um, helpful or what has been joyful, it's really been connecting with the brothers here. You know, the ones that I have a good relationship with. And like I said, you know, we share text messages. Um, you and I, we talked about some COVID circumstances prior to uh, the video shoot and how it really was affecting everybody. Well, of course, you know, through now word, we had our Zoom, but then we would also go over, you know, a couple of brothers house, John Mendoza, people like that would open up their home and we would still do things uh, to get the word and stay connected. Right. Because unless you have an additional source to connect to and go through things or have an understanding of what you're going through, it gets difficult. I mean, you know, people sometimes, mostly, and I'll just say me, try to do a lot of things on my own. Mm -hmm. The whole pride kicks in. You think, hey, I can figure this out. You can't. You have to be led by Christ. Allow Christ to lead you, but then also have a supporting team that help you helps you grow, you know, along with that. That is so, so true. Supporting team is key to um, your spiritual growth. You can't do it um, on your own. Uh, you have to be with like minded people. And so um, thank you for sharing your story. That's the time. We 
are up. But if you are out there and you want to get connected with like minded people, you want to make the best decision of your life and start following Christ. Um, you want prayer. You want to just talk to someone. Mm -hmm. You can go to www.nowword.org. You can click the connect tab and we are here and we are waiting to serve you um, and to help you in your journey. That is all we have for tonight. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time on My Story. Bye-bye. Next time on My Story. And then, of course, you know, then I'm a teenager and I not really go to church per se or not really follow rules of Christ or anything like that. So, you know, I can say that I was probably a, a well, I was a, by, by the time I'm a teenager, I'm like a full-fledged sinner, like... <laughs> Really, I'm really good at You're it. You're in there, yeah. I'm really good at it.